Hello guys. So my name is Mohammed Ahmed Jallo. I recently did the Duolingo English test. I know we all know now um, the Duolingo English test has become a very popular test recently, most especially during this time of the pandemic where most uh, English language testing centers have been closed due to you know, distancing and people working from home. So these issues has contributed significantly to the, uh, you know, um, popularity of the Duolingo English test. So even I was forced to do the test recently. Uh, I was initially targeting the IELTS, but you know, due to the difficulty and the urgency, I decided to do the Duolingo English test instead. And my scores were pretty good. I had a score that was way above the requirement I needed. So I thought it wise to share some of my, um, some of the techniques I used. Actually, I studied this test, uh, you know, in less than a week, I was able to obtain a score more than what I needed, but I studied efficiently. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, I spent huge amount of time studying. So what I'm gonna do, the first thing is that I'm gonna go through some PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I'm gonna show you the Duolingo English test guide. As I show you the guide, I will show you the question and for each question type, I will show you the technique or the strategy I used to practice it efficiently. And for full disclosure, I'm gonna be showing some YouTube channels that also help me and websites that I used that helped me um, very, very well. So let's go to my PowerPoint slides now. I'm gonna share my screen with you. All right, so these are the slides actually from the Duolingo English, um, uh, Duolingo English guide. And this is my certificate. <laughs> you can see right there. Oh, yeah, I block out some of the numbers for security reasons, you know. So this is my, this is my result uh, from the Duolingo. My name is Mohammed, uh, Mohammed Ahmed Jallo. So if you do the du Duolingo test, this is how your results will appear. So this is my overall score and literacy I will have 150, but other areas I, I flunked a little bit. I'm gonna show you in a, in a, in a moment. So uh, I'm just gonna skip this right now. So if you need a video uh, on these issues, I, you may make a comment in the comment section, you know, I'm going to review them as well. But right now we are not really interested in this. I'm sure all of you have read this guide. If you haven't, you should. It's very, very important because it gives you a complete idea of how the test is going to be. So this is the most important part that we're going to look at, the test structure. So the test structure actually gives you an idea of how the test looks like and what are the questions that are available within the test. So here I are understanding the test questions. So in understanding the test questions, the first question they give on the guide, this doesn't mean this is the first question you get in your exam. So you have to get that very, very clear. So here is a diagram of how the interface looks like. That is when you access the website, how does the interface looks like? This is the diagram. Here you have your timing that for each question, this time will appear. And then uh, this is the, the direction that tells you what to do. So this direction here, for every question that appears, this direction will tell you uh, this is what you need. So this is the diagram of how the interface, the website interface looks like. And everything you need to know about the questions are here. But well, this is a representation of one of the question types well, here, they are not addressing the question. Instead, they're addressing the interface, how the test look like when you access the website, you download the software, how is it gonna look like on your computer? So here, the first thing they, they show you is the time, the time that is remaining. But as soon as you access the question, you click on the question, the time starts running. And the next thing here is the direction that tells you uh, what to do. So in this case, it says type the missing letters to complete the text below, you see? So this is the direction or the instruction given you on how to answer the questions. So the next thing is that that is very, very important is to try to stay in, to stay in the frame. That is whenever you access, just like I'm recording this video, you can see my face directly. 
in the video in the in the camera right so this is also very very important because when you try to you know uh look away from the camera it looks like you are cheating because the test is not proctored someone is not standing by you so the way in which they, they the method they use to proctor this exam is that when you are done someone is going to watch the whole video and then see if you are looking away from the camera or you are communicating with someone else then they will disqualify you probably they'll ask you to do the test over if you are lucky if you are not then i think you have to pay again to do the test i'm not too sure of that but they are not going to grade your test they will tell you uh, it's invalid and then here is your progress through the test how you progress through the test as you go this uh, orange line will be filling out once it's reached here then you are done with the test and then you'll see the prompt to which you are responding here uh, this is the question assume as i like the prompt the same as the question so basically this is the whole interface for all of the questions okay the, the only thing that will be very here is the type of question you are responding to other than that the time will remain here the progress will show you staying in the frame and the instructions will be given but the prompt you are responding to will always vary okay <clears throat> so let's go to our first question type the first question type i that you will i mean um question type one doesn't mean this is the first question type okay so the question type one is read and complete <clears throat> so in this case you'll be given a, bar, uh, a passage but this passage you'll find missing letters some letters will be deleted so your 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 responsibility is to complete these um missing letters so how are you going to do that is by reading the passage so here they are, you are given some tips read and complete uh, uh read and complete ask you to type the missing letters to complete the text below for this sec for this question type you will fill in the blanks of unfinished words in the passage so they give you a tip they also give you a tip you know that's why duolingo is very nice they give you a tip <laughs> how to answer the questions so now it's all left with you uh, if you are going to use this tip uh, to, to your advantage or not so here they said read the passage before focusing on the question on 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 each individual word read the passage you know although words are missing you know it's kind of it's kind of cringy to read the passage with a bunch of missing letters you like you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna you're gonna get confused like oh my god how am i how am i gonna read this and then they say use context clues to help you complete the words the reason why you are reading the passage is to get a context of what this passage is about it helps you understand some of the words and they use the backspace or delete button to get back one space and delete the letter in case you type it doesn't mean you cannot go back to delete but you should be very careful because sometimes uh yeah it's 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 very very careful so that's why you advise to always you know take the practice test get used to the interface before you go so for this question type how did i practice it so what i did is that uh, i'm going to stop sharing this slide right now and then we'll go to our google chrome I'm going to share my Google Chrome um, right here. So how did I practice that, that type of question was um, this is how I practice that type of question. So I came to this British Council Learn English website. So here you have a lot of uh, on this right hand panel, you have a lot of options. You have listening, you have reading and so on. Be reading have beginner, pre intermediate, intermediate. So this is very, very helpful for you because you read a lot of passages here, you get used to, you know, reading, understanding words. As you read, you understand, you know, you get, you get an idea of a lot of passages like this one, you know, you can read it. And at the end of each passage, uh, you have some questions to answer. So this also helps you, uh, you see task one, task two, that is when you read this passage, you fill out some of the words. So this will help you you know and you should read a lot of books this is not all you read a lot of books or stories or newspapers you get acquainted with words so this is how i practice this test in addition to my reading because i'm a lover of reading there is also this website called det ready you know duolingo english test ready and 
uh, for full disclosure, it is not free, it is paid. So here, what I did was I purchased the unlimited 30 days, um, uh, the unlimited 30 days package. So I purchased this one and it was very, very helpful. The advantage of this, uh, we're gonna go into it right now. And yes, because I did my subscription, uh, because you purchase premium, you get unlimited attempts, begin practice. So, yeah. So here you have the right to select read, you know, the type of question we're talking about was read and select, right? So we select read and select. Um, no, we were talking about, <clears throat> so let's see how we can manage this to on our, okay. So I'm going to be right up here. So what did I do here is on the read and complete. Uh, read and complete, let's see. Read and complete. So this website is very, very useful, very, very helpful, you know. Uh, it helps you because you practice here. The reason why I recommend this website instead of the Duolingo practice is that once you practice the Duolingo one or two or three times, up to the fifth time, the questions doesn't change and all of the question types in the test are not available on the practice test and also at some point you start to get repetition so for full disclosure of a, for a warning the duolingo practice test can help you with your skills but i don't think it can determine the score you will get in the actual test yes that's why also there are a lot of youtube videos uh, online that can also help you and here uh, you have this, uh, you know, um, uh, this practice test uh, uh, from the DET Ready website. So the read and complete is here. You can practice as much as you want. And one advantage that is, um, and one advantage of this is that you can change the difficulty. You see, you can go easy, you can go medium, you can go hard. So I practice on this website thoroughly, you know, for like uh, five days, I was practicing continuously. One day I'll practice only one question type. The next day I'll practice another question type, just like that. And I was trying myself. And the benefit of practicing here is that you see all of the question you got right, all of the questions you got wrong, all of the filling in. So this is very, very important. In my opinion, I'm not promoting this website. I don't have anything to do with person who created this website. I'm just showing you how I got my score in a very in a, in a very good score in a very short period of time. So this is how I practice this particular question. Here is where I practice the question. But you don't have to do this. If you want, a lot of YouTube videos are available from this same guy who created this website. We we'll call him uh, Teacher Luke Duolingo. Okay. So he has a lot of videos online um practice videos you see so you can you can you can fill in you know a, a lot of questions here practice questions that you can practice uh you can also be successful you don't necessarily have to uh, uh buy the website i mean like to pay from the website so let's see this is how I was successful in this question type but for, for uh, the funny thing is that the duolingo test is very funny you know um as you get the questions right you know, the more the test gets harder. That is why this is a computer adaptive test. You know, um, the more you get more questions correct, the next question type they will bring for you, they will advance it. They will make it more difficult for you. So at some point I gave up, you know, but I, I still continue. I thought I was going to, I was not going to make it. All right. So let's see. Uh, this is the read and select. Question type two is read and select. So the read and select type is where you read the questions, you know, the sentences and select the one that is correct. Like you read the question and select which one is correct and which one is not. So this is also very, very important. It means you should be on top of your vocabulary. You should know the spelling of words. You should be very, very sure. If you are not sure of the word, don't select it. But if you are sure of the word, select it. So this is the key. And then also here, they have it. Uh, so look, made it read and select. So here there are some questions, you know, uh, like this one citation, uh, you know, dominant, 
vulnerable subscription uh, upward and so on and so forth so this, these are some of the uh, separately you know I'm not going to go through all of them because it's a video I'm making but if you submit you see all of the correct questions so I got six out of seven so he will show you the result so this way you know uh, your questions are correct or not so that is the second question type in the Duolingo test so for the last I mean for the third question type is listing and select you listen to the word and select it how did I practice this one is that first of all is that I listen to a lot of podcasts naturally I listen to podcasts I listen to news I mean like not news I mean I'm not really interested in the news but I listen for I listen to a lot of podcasts and podcasts mainly from British people from American people you know scientists that are speaking so I'm very very familiar with words and that is one key thing I did but one way you can also practice listening is you can use the IELTS websites, you can use the TOEFL websites, you can also use the YouTube videos. They are very, very helpful, you know, they help you a lot. So in this website, you can also find similar stuff. Uh, you can see uh, listing and select. So this way. Stable. See the word? Stable. 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 So it's very, very important. It helps you a lot as well. So using this website, you know, you find all the words you find correct. Browse. Case it initial. Interpret. Interpret. See. Amateur. Amateur. Yet. Smust. Smust. Plims. Plims. Prolet. Prolet. So these are the words I'm sure of. So three words. I got three out of possible four. You see, um, some of these words, yes, uh, I got three out of possible four. So it means I missed one question. So it's very, very important in the in this website. And the questions change a lot. And I was my difficulty was hard. You see, uh, my difficulty that I was practicing just now was hard. So you can you, you have the ability to adjust all of these things and practice efficiently. So this is what I did, and it was very, very helpful for me. Uh, in getting the score I needed. I mean, more than the score I needed. So the question type four is listing and type. Listing and type is to listen to the word and type it. So this is very, very important as well. It is important in the sense that if you are listening, there are some radios, you know, I mean, some programs online, they have the audio and then they have a transcript. The transcript is a written version of the discussion. So what you do is that you listen to it, when they are on the speak, you write as they are talking. When they are done, you look at the transcript if you find this kind of website. But this website also gives you that option. They have it. So here we have listing and type. After I graduated from college, I spent two years traveling around the world. So you see, after I graduated from college, college, I spent two years traveling the world. Period. Don't forget. After I graduated from college, I spent two years traveling around the world. Traveling around. You see, if I hadn't listened for the last time, I would have missed it. After I graduated from college, I spent two years traveling around the world. Make sure you use all of your options, you know. It's very, very important. Use all of the options you have. So let's submit and see. You know, I got it wrong. After I graduated from college, I spent two years traveling around the world. After I graduated from college, I spent two years traveling traveling around the world traveling are two l's i put one l see so that's why i got it wrong so it is very very efficient and yeah but i've got it right but i didn't so it's very very important to use these websites um the next question type here is uh, read aloud read aloud i used a specific technique and for most of us like where our pronunciations are kind of difficult to deal with. So it's important to practice a lot. So um, I did, I practiced with this website, but not so much. So what I did, what I did that was that, let me get rid of these things here. Um, I went to this British website here. I went to this British, uh, British Council uh, the British Council learning English. 
I, you know, I copied these things. Um, I copied uh, uh, passages, paragraphs, or sentences, and then I brought them to Microsoft Word. You know, Microsoft Word has this, this uh, dictation. Okay, so um, reading out out loud, aloud is very, very important because uh, if you pronounce the words well, because the, the, the Duolingo English test is a, it's a computer stuff, it's a software. So it has to hear you pronouncing the words correctly in order to grade you. So if you pronounce it wrongly, it's not gonna grade you. So here, I use this dictation software. So I'm gonna dictate uh, what is on the board right now. Let's see how accurate is it, okay? Anyway, you see, comma, no, so let's start over. Erase this one. But in the Duolingo test, you're not gonna say comma, <laughs> okay? So I'm gonna dictate now, just I'll forget about the punctuation, I'm just gonna dictate because it's gonna confuse you and it's less than you. Anyway, I have the documents about the new Berlin offices. We are going to be opening in three months. I moved here from London just last week. They are very nice offices and the location is perfect. Okay, so if you look at my dictation, I'm sorry. So if you look at my dictation and that of what is given in this, the only thing that is missing is the punctuation. So you can use this technique to practice your pronunciation. It's gonna help you a lot. It's really, really gonna help you. This is where I practice my pronunciation to make sure that yes, this interface, I mean like this, uh, the system they are using, the robotic system they are using to evaluate language, <laughs> it's almost the same software, machine learning software they are using to, you know, AI they are using to evaluate. Even this uh, Microsoft probably are using the same thing. So you can use this as a technique. Don't call me a genius yet. <laughs> well, this is how I practice. This is how I make sure that yes, my language, my pronunciations were a bit accurate, not 100%, but they were manageable. All right. So for the read, read out, read aloud, this is what I did. This is how I practiced it. I look for some difficult paragraphs, you know, passages that have sentences that have complex words. I look for all of these things and practice them very, very well. So now, let's see, what are we gonna, what's the next question type? The next question type uh, was write about the photo. And writing about the photo is one question that Writing about the photo is one question a lot of people struggle with. And if I should recommend about writing about the photo, I'll recommend you to go to uh, Teacher Look videos. Teacher Look videos are very, very excellent, okay? And also his website, okay? Um, writing about the photo, let's see. In the DET ready, he also have this type of questions. So question type is, here I have write about the photo. Here is the photo. But if you cannot write about it, but if you want to learn how to write about the photo, you have to go to his YouTube channel. His YouTube channel has everything in detail. Okay. So, um, but if you want to practice how to write about the photo, you can do it right here. You can write about the photo, you know, like however you want. Okay. And you know that in writing about the photo, usually start with in this picture or in this image, you know, in this image or, or in this photograph. But uh, you cannot write this or, or, or I'm just setting an example. But if you don't have anything to write, let's say for example, you submit, you see teacher Lutz, uh, the website's own interpretation or their way of writing for the photo. So, there is a young girl who is probably in her early 20s at a record store. She is looking closely at an old Elvis record. She's surrounded by old records. 
So write one of those sentences that describe the photo. You are describing the photo, right? So you can say in this picture, there's a young girl who is probably in her early 20s at a record store. She's looking closely at old Elvis records. She's surrounded by old records. That is, you know, kind of musical stuff. What's important in this website is that they also give you time, the same time the Duolingo gives you. So if you are able to answer the question within the time frame, it means you are also practicing time management whenever you do the test. So these are benefits that you get from this website. I cannot emphasize how important this website is. But if you want to learn how to write a photo, there are two YouTube channels. Uh, there is this one called Five Minutes English. Uh, five Minutes English. Yeah, I think. Uh, okay, this one, Five Minute English Exam. It has a very, very efficient way of writing about a picture describing the picture okay uh, um so it is the agree and disagree this is also a great channel where you can come to and practice all right so the next question type that we're going to look at is uh, speak about the photo so the interesting thing about write about the photo and speak about the photo is that they all have almost the same thing except where one of it you are writing to test your writing skill and another one you are speaking to test your speaking skill so that is the only difference but you can speak the same thing you can say like in this photo i can see a blonde girl probably in her early 20s looking at some elvis records she's standing in front of her you know in front of a lot of records and at the back i can see a lot of other records from other musicians you know like just like that you describe everything you see in the photo anything you see just say it just say anything you see because the, the, the software i mean like the ai just want to hear you see something about the photo almost everything in here is recorded so every single word you say counts don't think just say anything you see talk about it she has a right hand uh on this she has a left hand she has both of her hands holding the record she's looking directly at the record she looks very young and you can say anything just describe just use descriptive language so that helps you a lot. And the next thing here is uh, read and write. Well, read and write uh, is kind of tough, but if you practice it, you also get the hang of it. So this website also helps you with that, the read and write and everything. So I practice the read and write here. And then because the advantage of using this website is you, see, you get to see the answers. You get to see the answers okay so this is where i practice in the duolingo and uh um and using the duolingo uh the teacher looks website you know his his his, his youtube channel so basically this is how i was able to get my good results in the duolingo test so here is my this is the duolingo guide you need to get it if you want to do the test and this is my results right here uh in literacy i had 150 in comprehension 145 conversation i had 135 production i had 140. uh this test they said is invalid because i had some internet issues that's why it's very very important to have your internet okay so when i started the test for the first time my internet went off and the whole thing shut down in less than 10 minutes so I had to redo the test. So I went and attempted again, and they allowed me to do it. So this is it, this is my overall results. So it's very important for you to, to try. I'm quite sure, um, uh, I'm certain you can do, uh, you know, a wonderful job in practicing this test. Okay. Uh, they say here you can get the results in less than two days. I got mine in less than 15 hours. So I don't know. I, Probably it's because the test is high in demand right now. So they are doing all they can to, uh, you know, um, make sure people get. So this pre-test survey is a bit different from our practice test. You also have to understand that in this pre-test survey, uh, you answer a few short questions, not just about yourself, 
but you also take a little bit of free of, of, te of the test you know but here they'll give you i don't know if something they are trying something new they'll give you some passages you they delete the whole part a whole paragraph from the passage and they are you have this bunch of paragraphs on the side and they'll ask they'll ask you to select the paragraph that is supposed to go into that particular passage in a specific area so probably this is something new they are trying to introduce and yeah it's kind of cool i thought i was going to have it in the test but it wasn't there so yes that's it and guys i think i'm going to stop here this is how i was able to be successful so make sure you use all the resources available to you in order to be successful in this test because it's not just one day test uh it takes a lot of practice and yes you have to you have to do a lot of practice as well so these are the tips I have to share if you want to be successful in this rolling your test. There is no magic. You have to practice. I mean, you have to continuously practice. That's the only way you are going to be successful. And this website, I found it. I spent like, you know, the $12. Yeah, it was kind of hard, but it was really helpful. You know, I just, I practiced on the website for five days and then I did my test. Imagine if I had practiced on the website for 30 days before doing my test. I would have probably been... <laughs> And one important thing about this score is that on the IELTS is equivalent to, let's see the equivalence in the IELTS. Uh, if this get the score, my score is 145. So 145 to 150 is equivalent to 8.5 in IELTS, you see? So it's very, very important. And I just practiced, you know, very short time. Uh, I'm a bit fluent in English, so I was really just practicing because I needed to get you know the format of the test when i did the practice test they were produced i couldn't get all of the questions and i was not really patient with the youtube so i just decided to do a real-time practice on that website on the beauty ready website so if you have the 12 dollars i think it's a worth the money or if you think you can practice everything in seven days had i known that you know like it was um gonna be that easy for me i wouldn't have got the 30 days but i just you know, I felt it's economical just to buy the 30 days in case, as I, in case I didn't get the score I needed, I would have practiced again and do it for the next time. So this is how I was successful in the Google the test. And I wish you all the best as you prepare for the test. But please practice as much as you can. Use all the resources. There is no magic. The test is not difficult at all. Well, the test can, the test can get difficult if you, if you answer the questions correctly. Uh, because the more you answer the questions correctly, the more they give you difficult questions. But if you are not answering the question correctly, they keep the test at a level par, you know, like keep up with the pace. But for me, like I told you at some point, uh, some of the uh, completion, you know, these deleted words, the ones that they were giving me now was very, very complicated. It was very, very difficult. But yet and still, I was able to get to school. So yes. Uh, I think that's it. That's what I want to share with you today. And I hope you find it very helpful. So if you have any question or you have anything you want me to share with you, do leave a comment in the comment section or just comment. Um, I can probably, maybe we can set up time where I can help you one-to-one -one about the English test, probably speaking or whatever it is you want, to, you want me to help you with. Just leave a comment in the comment section. I'll make sure to read it and get back to you. Thank you. Anyway, good luck with the exam.